I've seen a term being used quite a lot in the news lately. More and more cities, countries, companies and even famous people are saying they want to reach net zero climate changing emissions. I kind of get the gist of what this means, but if a friend asked me to explain it, I think I'd get a bit stuck. So, I'm going to explore what net zero actually means and perhaps more importantly, how you can get to it. The idea of zero emissions is pretty straightforward. You just stop producing the emissions that cause climate change, right? So reducing some emissions is of course doable, but it's getting to the zero part that's quite tricky, particularly for some industries like the airline industry, for example, where the fuel used to power the plane comes from fossil fuels and there aren't any green alternatives just yet. So instead of a zero goal, a lot of people are opting for a net zero goal instead. Another word for net zero is carbon neutrality. This means you balance out the emissions you can't get rid of yourself through investing in other projects or initiatives that can reduce those emissions for you. This is also known as offsetting. Here are some examples of offsetting, mainly to do with trees. You could pay to plant more of them and those trees then absorb carbon dioxide. That's what a lot of airlines do to make you feel better about flying. Or you could pay to protect endangered natural forests like tropical rainforests, for example, and in turn you end up protecting all the species that live in those forests too. Scientists actually say this is a more nature-friendly way of reducing your emissions as opposed to planting trees from scratch. Then you could also change farming practices. So soil is tilled less, for example, and is able to retain more carbon rather than release it. The thing is, it's pretty hard to track exactly how many emissions these three things trap. Then you've got things like forest fires or illegal logging, which means that the safety of the trees and the emissions that they're storing are not really guaranteed. Other ways to offset emissions have to do with technology. So you could invest in solar panels or wind turbines in poorer countries, for example. Or you could pay to support new clean green technology, like green hydrogen fuel. So this uses sustainable energy to create a type of liquid fuel. And then that liquid fuel works like a fossil fuel, but the only byproduct is water. But that's a whole other video. Bill Gates, for example, is looking into this technology to offset Microsoft's past and present emissions. Then a lot of other tech falls under this category called carbon capture and storage which is actually a lot cooler than it sounds. Emissions are pulled from the air or from power plants and pumped into storage underground in old oil wells or other structures. With direct air capture, machines suck carbon from the air and then it's buried underground or turned into something like material for building roads. Using this CO2 for greenhouses or for fizzy drinks wouldn't work though because that would just go straight back into the atmosphere. One last idea is something called BEX which stands for Bioenergy with Carbon Capture and Storage. This kind of brings together the natural solution with the tech solution. Large parts of the planet would be covered in trees and shrubs and grasses, and then these would then be burned for energy and in power plants with the emissions stored underground. But these ideas all face a lot of similar challenges. Take the UK government, for example. It pledged to become net zero by the year 2050 which is great, but that requires a lot of underground storage, especially when other governments and companies are pledging to do the same thing. Direct air capture is actually really expensive. And then BEX, for example, requires a lot of land. And as we know, we already need that land to feed our growing population. Plus, changing how you use land could also pose a threat to the rights of people who own and use that land already, like indigenous groups, for example. The other big challenge is finding that balance between net and zero. As we said earlier, the ideal situation would be to remove all emissions altogether, right? But a lot of companies are jumping on this net zero bandwagon, meaning they're often more net than zero. So they're burning more fossil fuels and then just kind of storing them underground. That's like having an overflowing bathtub that you're desperately trying to empty, but the tap is still running full blast. It doesn't quite make sense, does it? So what are other challenges to reaching net zero? As Net Zero gathers more and more popularity, we're going to see a lot of projects popping up that may not always make sense or be the most sustainable, like planting trees in the wrong places. Another problem is that as it stands, it doesn't cost anyone to emit these climate changing emissions. This means if companies don't have a strong incentive to cut back on their emissions, they're not really going to do so beyond their own voluntary pledges. So, is Net Zero a key part of curbing climate change? 
for sure it is. But the projects need to be scrutinized to make sure that they're of good quality. But in reality, any net zero pledge is actually quite simple. Governments, businesses, and of course, all of us need to stick to our word and cut back our emissions first. Offsets should be used just to clean up the trickle that's left behind. And we have to start now. Thanks for watching our video. You see that subscribe button there below? Click on it so you don't miss our next one. We'd also love to hear from you. Are you offsetting? Are you reducing your emissions? We'd love to know how and why. Or maybe there's another word you want us to explore in our following video. We want to hear from you.